Hello, Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian at the Pflugerville Public Library. And during this time of library closure and program postponements and cancellations, we've been bringing you additional content to hopefully help you pass the time while you've been at home. Uh, so I've actually got some crafts that folks will be able to do, hopefully with stuff they can find right around the house. Uh, Crafty Cafe is a program that we do on the third Sunday of every month at 2 p.m. Um, anyone 12 and up is welcome to attend. We have a craft and there is a Keurig uh, for beverages to make it a cafe. So for these purposes, you'll have to provide your own beverage, but we're hoping to provide everyone with some crafty at home cafe. Uh, so we've got some crafts for you to try and hopefully have the things around the house. So for this craft, you'll also only need a few things you'll likely be able to find around the house. Um, some wax paper, some old broken crayons that you don't want, um, pencil sharpener that you don't want to use for pencils anymore, um, an iron, and then some cotton cloth to iron your wax paper between to both protect your iron and protect whatever surface you're ironing on. That surface you'll want to be a little bit um, harder than a standard ironing board. So if you have a piece of wood or I'm going to use a TV tray uh, to iron on. Um, and really, I remember this is a craft. I don't even remember Girl Scout school, uh, library even, um, that we did with just crayons. When this was going to be Crafty Cafe, wax paper lanterns, we were actually also using uh, dried flowers uh, to iron in between the sheets of uh, wax paper. And to make it into a lantern, you would also need to have some dowels. But if you don't have any of those handy, um, but you happen to have some ribbon, a pair of scissors, and you could just iron in the cool crayon wax and then cut into a shape. If you happen to have some black or darker colored or any color construction paper, um, you could create a frame shape and then hang it on a window as a kind of faux stained glass. So it's really cool. Uh, when you've got your wax paper pulled out and decide on your crayons, um, I will say that I've found that crayons clog up a pencil sharpener rather quickly and can break off in there. So if you've got a toothpick or another tool that you can use to get wax out of there, that'll be very handy. Um, so I just made myself a couple of piles. I have a probably not quite 12 by 12 sheet of wax paper. Um, folded in half. I want to make sure that my um, iron is set to on to a non-steam setting so that it's not doing uh, releasing any steam. So now I'm just going to place uh, the colors that I want on one half of my piece of wax paper. Um, you can try to be very specific and create a a particular pattern or maybe a, a flower or a tree. Something really basic is going to be a lot easier to translate once um, the wax is melted in here. Um, it does kind of get very widespread and it's not that easy I found. Although I'd love to see people who might um, be a little bit more, who are a little bit more successful than I was at something like that. So I'm just going for a scattered pattern, kind of brighter colors in with um, a little bit darker colors. The thicker the wax layer that you lay down, um, the more will be in that spot. So now that I've got this ready to go, you'll see that a little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to fold my wax paper down over top, lay flat, and take my other piece of fabric, cotton fabric, lay it over top, make sure that my iron is warm enough, and then I'm just going to gently go across the wax paper underneath, checking to make sure that it's actually melted in the wax. And to the paper. Let's see. Oh, we're getting there on this side. I need a little bit more over here. Oh, there we go. Now it's really starting to spread. 
and I'm giving a fair amount of pressure which is why you want um, a harder surface underneath the iron and you can see here all the wax starting to come through on the paper so you definitely want to make sure you've got a piece of material so that your iron itself doesn't get wax on it because that would be unfortunate later on when you try to wire in something that's a little bit more important than crayon wax in between wax paper even though that looks really cool that blended together rather nicely so in order to turn this into a lantern with a LED light in it you would need at least four of your ironed um, kind of faux stained glass. See, there's one I tried to do a flower and a little sun as so you need four panels and if you wanted to do it as more of a um, kind of faux stained glass hanging in the window um, type of project you can all, of course cut out any shape that you can trace um, you can also make a frame for it so I have this really cool little tool um, for journaling that can make circles um, and so I'm just using this dark gray paper and I'm going to make the biggest circle I can make and then I'm going to go about two holes down and make it slightly smaller although really this isn't too big I'm going to make two of these so here two down and there and then again if you had a circle punch you'd be able to uh, do this rather quickly Without, I am stuck to the old-fashioned way of cutting things out. And I am going through this rather fast. I'm sure you guys will go a lot slower and follow a lot closer to the exacting lines that you have drawn. So here we go. And so a circle type frame, and so I would choose whichever one, decide what I want to highlight, where I kind of have the most coverage here. Um, and then probably easiest for me personally would be to use something like this double-sided tape to add, actually I'm going to separate them as I do this so I don't get it stuck before I want it to. A little bit of double stick tape here all the way around and right here and then I've chosen where I want it to be and I'm going to go ahead and place that there and then I'll be able to cut out the panel around it wax paper cuts a lot nicer um, and then I can hang that in a window or place it somewhere where it's going to get a lot of sunlight I'm putting the other circle on the back here the same way with your dowels you're going to go ahead and start making the lantern shape uh, these were a pack of 12 from the Dollar Tree if you've got craft sticks um, you can also use those and if you've got 16 that will actually work you can create each of these as with four um, dowels or craft sticks and then glue the two edges together um, to create them. For this I've only got 12 so we're actually going to only create the full square on two of these sheets so I will do a line of glue down the dowel with the hot glue gun and then place the dowel down on the wax paper design where I want to have it to make sure that I've got enough of the wax, crayon wax melted under there. And I'm going to do that again for the side so that I know the distance that I will be going for my top piece. Make sure that's straight up and down. And then I'll be able to lay out my top piece. Line of hot glue. Be careful you don't burn yourself. For me, these are pretty thin dowels. There we are. And then make sure my right side will fit in here. There we go. All right, and we'll glue this side. 
So once we've got the two square pieces, we have our two other panels and our four dowels left. Um, and so for these, I'm going to do top and bottom and glue the dowel on. This first one will be a little bit easier because you'll have the extra dowel to measure. Um, your last panel, you're going to have to measure against one of your panels that is already created. So I'm just going to place that dowel there for measurement. And bust up into the camera there. Well, rolling into the middle isn't the worst. I can still use it because really all I need is to make sure that my dowel is being placed completely down six inches from the one on top. All right. There's one, and then with my last panel here, my last two dowels. One of glue down the dowel. This you may be able to tell was the all of the crayon shavings that were left panel. So it will be interesting to see how well any light shines through there. And as I said, since we're out of dowels, I'm going to need to use the, pan the other panel, um, but I want to make sure I don't glue them to each other. Last dowel here. Move that out of the way and place that there. Okay, with two our two end panels and one of our square panels, I'm going to go ahead and add a line of glue just down the right side of this and then take one of my side panels and tilt it in so that it matches. So place my line of glue down the side here. There. And then, as I said, I'm going to bring my piece up and hold from the outside, getting it straight up and down. Again, be careful of the hotness of the glue. All right, there's one side. Let's see if I can gently turn this around. And I'm going to repeat that process. Line the glue right down the outside of my dowel here. Bring my side panel over and up, making sure that I fit in between the two dowels. There I am. And so at this stage, I can trim off my um, edges of these two side panels right at the dowel. We've got good scissors. You should almost be able to just run them straight down. And I'll cut straight through that wax paper. And we are going to need a little bit of extra hot glue right here on this side. No worries if you have to re-glue. Many a crafter will be able to tell you that you will have to redo and prep and test and overdo. Sometimes just the coolest things come out. There we are. Press up on our side here. Trim off my excess there, gently. All right, now we need to get our last panel put on. These pieces to the side. So for this final panel, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off my excess from the get-go so that I can see 
where everything's going a little bit easier. So there, we trimmed our panel down, and really even that's a cool panel that you could hang somewhere um, near a window or someplace that would have some light behind it. We've got our little tea light here. See there, light behind. But we want to make this a full on lantern, so we're going to connect this piece to our first three pieces. Um, so I've got a little bit more room. I'm going to lay my bead of glue along one side. And I'm going to come right in here and gently place it on the dowel on the bottom and lay my side panel right up against it, smoothing in to allow the glue to connect. Um, if I need to add a little bit of extra glue, slide right in there. There we go. All right, and then I've got my one last side. I'm going to turn it here and lay my bead of glue quickly this way just so I don't lose this other last side. So then I am going to lay it down here so I can lay and get my placement just where I want it. Again, gently. So for this particular type of construction, one side's a little bit taller than the other. It's a little bit wobbly, but you really get the LED light through there. Ooh, even that one that has a lot more of the black wax in it. And then there. So that is a wax paper lantern using crayon wax and an LED.